What's up, Elite Army? This is your kinda well, kinda toxic host, Sarah Rittendale, bringing you another episode of Well-ish. A really important tactic that I want to leave you guys with as we come to the end of the 28 days of self-love is the ability to make yourself feel safe no matter where you are on your self-love journey. If you are just starting out and you have barely to no self-love or you feel like you love yourself a pretty good amount, you're always going to have these feelings of dissatisfaction, discomfort, disappointment, anxiety, frustration, you know, those negative feelings are always going to come up. It just depends on how well you're able to manage those emotions if you're in a low place or if you're, you know, okay in a very good, healed sort of self-love place. No matter where you are at, if you can't set a boundary or you just can't get through that negative feeling, you are not a failure for not being able to do that. It is tough for even experts. Every single person who we've had on the podcast this month who has gone from a place of less self-love to completely being able to take control over themselves and their emotions still experiences these negative emotions. Everybody still experiences negative emotions, even though it's constantly painted out in social media and in books that there is this place of perfection and that people are healed and don't experience it anymore. It's not the way that it works. You are still going to experience these things. But at the very least, if you can get yourself to feeling like you are safe, that you are okay, you are in good shape. So what does that look like? What exactly do I mean? Essentially, it is just being able to tell yourself that you are okay, that nothing horrible is happening to you right in this moment, that you are safe and okay, and you can come down from the intense, overwhelming emotions that you're experiencing. It's telling yourself whatever works so that you can feel okay, you can feel validated, you can feel like you're capable of working through whatever it is you're experiencing, and letting yourself know that you are are more than your emotions, bringing you to a place of ease, even if it's not 100% peace, but at least bringing yourself down from those psycho feelings and just like getting so worked up that you can have a little bit more control over the way that you are living your life, the way that you're feeling, the way that you're responding to what is happening in your life right now. It's transitioning from this phase of being very tense to getting to a place of relaxation and again, being able to controllably choose your responses so that you're living a life that you want to live and that you feel proud of living and like that you like and that you feel okay in yourself that you're making those choices and that you're not regretful of the choices that you're making instead of reacting to life and, you know, kind of being sporadic and making decisions based off of emotion that you're then going to feel bad about later. It's being able to, at the very least, feel okay inside so that you can work on the other stuff to make yourself feel better to get through a situation with more clarity. Even if that means not actually doing anything or going anywhere or taking any action, but just getting to a place in yourself that you can watch a movie on your couch and be at peace instead of watching a movie, but you're not even watching it because your head just won't shut the fuck up. So that being said, I want to give you guys some of my personal tools that are my absolute favorite that I have found over trial and error work absolutely best for me in order to come down from that place of psychosis (laughs) that my brain like puts me in and get to a place of more control and being able to feel through my emotions in a tactful way that don't leave me spiraling and reeling and just being in this place of like, oh my God, I cannot live like this. I cannot live with my brain like this. So hopefully you can try them and see if they work for you or maybe they spark an idea for you so that you can mold them into doing something that works for you. Because really at the end of the day, being able to make yourself feel safe is going to be whatever fucking works. It's not what you should do. It's not what you're supposed to do. It's not what the 
self-help gurus say that you have to do. It's literally whatever works. We're all just living life. It's not that serious. It's whatever works for you until it doesn't anymore. You know, obviously, like if you're doing it in an unhealthy way by substance abuse or, you know, whatever else, something along those lines, I don't recommend that. But I mean, if you got it under control, it's not the end of the world. So just saying you got to find whatever works for you. So you can listen to these, see if they help and see if you can mold them into something that does work for you if they don't. My first one is one of my favorite ones, and it's one of the first ones that ever truly resonated with me. I give myself permission to blank. When I heard it, what I needed was I give myself permission to not be perfect. But you can use this for absolutely anything. I give myself permission to feel hurt. I give myself permission to be uncomfortable. I give myself permission to be upset, whatever it is that you're experiencing, because typically we have these secondary emotions emotions of like anger or upsetness that we are having that emotion, especially as you progress through your healing, you get to a place that you're like, fuck, I thought I was healed. And now I'm experiencing this again. What am I doing wrong? Why can't I get it? Why can't I just stay healed and okay forever? But it's giving yourself permission to not be perfect and that giving yourself permission that your healing will fluctuate, giving yourself permission for blank, like whatever it is that you need to give yourself permission for experiencing, because whatever you're experiencing is just a part of your process. And it's going to help you become the best version of yourself in the long run. I really like to use this one as a means of getting myself through whatever feeling it is I'm experiencing. Because if I give myself permission to feel whatever feeling I'm having, I can really understand that I am more than my feeling and that I will get through it and I will understand it and I will be a better person because I've gotten through it and I've understood it and I know myself more now and I know what my boundaries are. Even if I'm not ready to express them, it's a way that I know what makes me feel safe in my own skin and in my own life. The second one I use is definitely an older one that I've taken with me for a really long time because it fucking works live where your feet are. If you think about that, it's essentially a different way for you to say live in the present. But for whatever reason, and I don't think I'm alone in this, when I hear live in the present, it's just kind of oversaturated to the point that I can't even say that to myself as a mantra in order to remind myself to live in the present. It just doesn't work for me because so much of our present is made up of the past and thinking about how we've gotten to the present by the things that we've experienced in the past and thinking about what I could be doing in the present to predict or to change my future. So it puts me too far into either the past or future that it just doesn't work for me to be like, oh, just live in the present. It's just like, oh yeah, just fucking live in the present. No big deal. Like as if it's super easy to do. But for whatever reason, when I hear live where your feet are, that seems really easy to do. So that's an example that if that works for you, great, but it shows that you have to just do whatever works. Sometimes it is just a tweaking in wording. If you want to go back to the last example, give yourself permission to not be perfect. That's the same thing as saying you're imperfectly perfect, but that never resonated with me. I was never like, oh oh yeah, I'm imperfectly perfect. That makes sense. It just never clicked in my brain, but give yourself permission to not be perfect did. So being able to say, live where your feet are and say, okay, focus on where your feet are, dude. Like you're thinking too far into this event that happened or this that happened in the past or what could happen in the future and planning out your solutions for all of the bullshit that's happening in your life right now. But if you just for a moment, think about where are my feet? Where are my feet? Okay, I'm right here. This is the only place that matters is right now. Nothing else exists except right here where my feet are. And it doesn't solve your problem And I think that's the biggest thing that I want you guys to understand when I'm talking about this is making yourself feel safe isn't a problem solver. It doesn't make the other shit in your life go away. It's making sure that you feel safe and calm so that you then become more capable of accomplishing whatever is happening in your life and working through those challenges. 
Kind of in the same token is my third one, recognizing your surroundings. And I do this in a couple different ways, dependent on what I need at that point in time. But being able to simply say, okay, hold on, hold on, where am I? I'm in my kitchen, I'm in my house, I'm safe, nobody else is here right now, and the situation that I'm freaking out about in my head is not currently happening. There is nothing currently happening in this exact moment that's making me feel this way, that it's stuff that I might have to worry about in the future. It's stuff that's happened in the past. But right now, I am safe. I am healthy. I am in my home. I am, it's quiet. You know, you're you're not in that moment experiencing whatever chaos is going on in your head. So being able to make yourself feel safe in that way. And again, being able to kind of... Okay, I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm just in my house. And right now, right in this moment, I'm safe. And I have time to figure out what I'm going to do about this situation. Now, sometimes that's not always the case. And again, we have to be able to have a few different things in our back pocket to use to make us feel safe because it's not going to apply for every situation. Because that's not going to apply if you are in a in the moment thing that craziness is happening and your emotions are taking over and you're getting overwhelmed. In that situation, to kind of recognize your surroundings, I really like to do this because it's something that nobody will know that you're doing. It's something you can do completely silent in your head is being able to recognize your surroundings through your senses. It's picking five things for each sense that you're experiencing in that moment. Five things you see, five things you hear, five things you smell, five things you taste, and five things you feel. The taste one is a little bit difficult, but you know, as long as you can get through the first four, you're typically pretty good. Like five things you feel could be the wind on your face or your butt on your seat or your feet on the ground or the warm air around you. Five things you hear can be people chattering, people, you know, the stove cooking something. There's just listening to anything so that you bring yourself to this moment and you're just focusing on that this is where I'm at. I'm here right now. And it calms your brain down. Another thing that you can do to calm yourself down, make yourself feel safe and bring some clarity to your mind is breathing exercises. Because again, it's like the last example, nobody knows that you're doing it. It's something that you can do quietly to yourself and it doesn't raise any flags to anybody. Nobody is any the wiser. But doing things like simply just starting to pay attention to your breaths, letting your exhale be longer than your inhale, box breathing. Uh, You hold one side of your nose, breathe in, and then switch nostrils, breathe out, breathe back in through that same nostril, switch back, breathe out. You know, that works really well. Um, You can, there's another one that you like totally breathe in as hard as you can, and then take one second sip of air and then exhale all of that out and you do that a couple times, look them up. I mean, there's several breathing exercises that you can do that are strictly for anxiety, for overwhelm, that do make you feel more clarity. And you just kind of have to force yourself to do it. And when you're feeling like crazy emotional, it doesn't, you know, sometimes your brain is like, that's not going to work. Don't even do that. Don't even try. So you have to like almost force yourself into it because when you do it, you're like, okay, I feel better. I feel like I can think a little clearer about what's going on. And then after you do the breathing exercises, maybe you move into another tactic to make you feel safe before you begin problem solving because you know you didn't talk yourself down from anything. You just did some breathing. So being able to get your mind to a slower pace is going to be really helpful for you to then work through some of the issues that you're experiencing. Repetition is king. I don't know why I never thought I had to repeat anything to myself. Like I always thought that one day I would get to this place of wellness and that I 
I would just be there forever. That once I learned a specific skill or I attained a certain characteristic, that I would never have problems with it ever again. And that I would just levitate within that characteristic. Like that once I achieved confidence, I would always be confident. Once I learned how to set a boundary, I would never have any issue setting a boundary again. Once I stopped caring about people's opinions, I would never have any run ins with people's opinions ever again. But it takes repetition. Let that be several times during the day or just consistently over your life, you're going to have to keep repeating things to yourself over and over and over. We heard that from the self-love expert, Dr. Jane Tornator, uh, a couple weeks ago. She, a self-love expert, bro, was talking about how she was never raised with boundaries. And so when she is feeling uncomfortable, when she has to put herself in the position to go ahead and set those, she says to herself several times a day, as her brain starts to be overwhelmed and have high emotions, oh, honey, you're okay. You're hurting. I'm here with you. I have your back. It's okay. Everything's going to be all right. And so like, that's the same thing that repetition is king when it comes to that, like being able to repeatedly say, you are okay. I have your back. Oh, honey, I see you. Everything's okay. Or saying to yourself, like, I know I've told you guys this story in the past, but I'm going to tell you again that like one time when I was getting ready for personal training, I had never personal trained in my life before. And because I had been a personal trainer, I felt anxious about it. And I felt like I was going to be like made fun of. I felt like nervous because I just didn't want them to have this idea of me or be somebody that like didn't know what they were doing working out because I did very much know what I was doing. And so I didn't want people to have a negative opinion of me or whatever. So I was so afraid to go stand at the desk and say like, hi, I'm ready for my first session. And I literally had to tell myself several fucking times, you are anxious because it is different and it is unknown. And I know that it's because it's unknown. And I also know that every time I get anxious about the unknown, that once I do it, I am okay. And then it becomes second nature. And I had to repeat that to myself over and over and over and over and over. When I, anytime I had the anxious emotion come back up, which was from the time that I signed up for personal training a week ago, all the way up until I was walking up to the desk having anxiety. I'm telling myself that over and over and over every time it came up so that I knew what to do. And again, that didn't solve the problem. It didn't make the anxiety go away because it kept coming back. But every time it came back, if I told myself, the reason if I was able to talk myself down from it and make myself realize that I really was safe and that everything was going to be okay because I know that everything has always been okay, it gave me clarity and it made me feel more calm and in control of my emotions. I was still experiencing the emotions, but I was in control of them. That leads me into my last one is get in front of the feeling. If you are feeling whatever feeling, ask yourself, why am I feeling X feeling? When you get in front of it, when you pull out the feeling and what's happening out of the shit storm of your mind, it brings clarity. If you are just experiencing a challenge and you're experiencing something and there's drama or there's whatever involved in it and you're just like, it's like, you, I can't even explain it. It's just the shit storm of your mind that there's just so many emotions going on and it feels like you're thinking things and you are, but it's not actually clear thoughts. Like it's the, it's a different kind of thought than you are having if you were to talk to a friend out loud. It's like this mishmash of a whole bunch of shit fucking going through your head at rapid speed. And you have to be able to get in front of that emotion and be like, wait, 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 why am I anxious? Why am I feeling that way? And then you can get to the bottom of whatever fear you're experiencing or whatever emotion you're experiencing and work on that because that is what's going to bring clarity and help solve the issue and calm that emotion more than just coming up with a fucking shit ton of solutions for whatever emotion that you're experiencing. 
For example, let's say you post something on the internet and you're not a very big social media poster. And so now you're anxious. What are people going to think of me? I look stupid. Should I have even posted that? Did that even make sense? What if I spelled something wrong? Did the video even like work? Is it clear? What did it look bad? Maybe my videography sucked. There's so many better things out there. And it's like, you're not actually saying this stuff, but it's just like all of these feelings that lead to these thoughts are happening in your head. But if you say, stop, why are you anxious? Why are you so afraid of posting that picture? What are you afraid of? And you say, it's typically very clear, I'm afraid of people's opinions of me. And you can say, that's my fear of rejection. And then you can say, but I know that if people reject me because I wanted to post what I want to post on the internet, then that's not my problem because I know that I'm behaving in alignment with my best self. I know that I'm behaving in alignment with who I really am. And even though they judge me, I would not have behaved differently. And then you can feel clarity and you can feel peace and you have validated yourself and you've proven that you're capable of getting through it and you've proven to yourself that you are more than your feelings. Finding what makes you feel safe is trial and error, and you have to work through things to figure out what works for you, because what works for me might not work for you. What works for Jim might not work for Linda, but maybe we could take pieces of what works for each other and mold them into whatever it is that we need and try to apply them to our own life. Or maybe there is something that works for me that would work for you, but you won't know unless you try. But at the end of the day, you just have to find what works for you. You have to find a combination of words that resonate for you. And if there isn't something that genuinely clicks inside of you, keep looking because it's out there. It's a matter of having your own back. And even if you're not at this place that you completely feel that you love yourself, it's being able to show yourself an act of love so that you eventually can learn that you do love yourself because you've proven to yourself through your actions that you do, that you have your back, that you care for you, that you're making you feel safe, and that you are putting yourself in the driver's seat of your life and of your emotions. You'll show yourself you love yourself before you might even be able to see or acknowledge it. Thank you so much for listening to day 27 of the 28 days of self-love. We only have tomorrow, which genuinely kind of breaks my heart. I love talking to you guys every day and I think it's been really beneficial and I've loved connecting with you guys. So this has just been really one of a kind experience. I I love the 28 days so much and I'm so excited to (laughs) already to do it again next year. Make sure to subscribe to the show so you can tune in tomorrow for our very last day of the series. Day 28, self-love is the road to becoming your elite self. Thank you guys so much for listening. Make sure your day kicks ass. Do not forget how elite you are, and I will talk to you tomorrow.